Hello folks, welcome back. If you're new around here, my name is Kweku and I am a pharmacist. Today we're briefly going to be reviewing the medication Faxiga. We are going to take a look at what it is, what it is used for, and we're going to place special emphasis on seven side effects, which I think are very key and which I think you should not ignore if you should experience any of them. So first off, what is Faxiga? Well, Faxiga is an anti-diabetic medication. It belongs to a class of medications called sodium glucose co-transport 2 inhibitors. We call them SGL2 for short. And it is used together with diet and exercise to manage type 2 diabetes. It is also used to reduce the risk of hospitalization for people with type 2 diabetes who have heart failure. And also even for people who generally have heart failure just to reduce the risk of dying or to reduce the risk of hospitalization in such people. Now, how does Faxiga work? Well, Faxiga works by blocking the reabsorption of glucose and sodium in the kidneys. So ordinarily, as you may probably be aware, the kidney is responsible for forming urine. And in the process of forming urine, sometimes the kidney would deem certain things to be vital to the body. And in, and in that respect, the kidney will reabsorb those things back into the bloodstream. Typical example is glucose. The, kidney will think that, oh, hey, glucose is a good thing. We don't need to excrete it. We need to get it back into the bloodstream. However, if you are diabetic or if you have a problem man managing your blood glucose levels, reabsorbing that glucose back into the bloodstream may obviously be detrimental. So what medications like Faxiga do will block the reabsorption of glucose and sodium from the urine back into the bloodstream. The result is that there is an increased excretion of glucose or to put it in very simple terms you're peeing away all the extra glucose now how should Faxiga be taken well first off you need to take it exactly as directed by your doctor uh, but generally if you are diabetic you'll be started on five milligrams daily it may be taken ideally in the morning without regard to food that means that it may be taken either before or after food if you need more glycemic control or if the five milligrams is not good enough to control your blood sugar, then maybe it may be increased to 10 milligrams as need as necessary. And I did say take it in the morning because Faxiga has uh, a tendency to increase your information or to increase your frequency of going to the bathroom. So ideally, if you take it in the morning, the idea is that you don't take it at night where it would disturb your sleep. That is why it is recommended to be taking in the morning versus taking it at night time. Now to those side effects, those seven side effects that I talked about in the beginning. Number one is that Faxiga has a tendency to cause hypoglycemia. That is when your blood sugar level goes too low. I mean, this is understandable. That is what we expect the medication to be doing. However, in certain instances, that sugar level goes too low where it becomes problematic. And when it comes to hypoglycemia, I typically recommend that you should have an action plan if it should occur, what you're going to do. And the first thing you need to do actually is to know even what the signs and the symptoms of hypoglycemia are. And these are some of the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. So we have headache, weakness, confusion, shaking or feeling jittery, drowsiness, or even for some people, dizziness or irritability. Others may experience sweating, hunger, or even an increased heart rate. I know some people carry things like glucose tablets and keep them handy such that whenever you encounter a scenario like this, there's something ready to go to bring your blood sugar levels to the appreciable level. Number two side effect that you should be worried about is dehydration. Faxiga has been known to cause dehydration in a lot of people there's, because there is increased loss of water and salt or sodium from the body. Now, dehydration may cause you to feel faint, dizzy, lightheaded or weak especially when you go from a, a sitting position to a standing position i think we call autostatic hypotension so you're sitting down everything is fine and you stand up all of a sudden you feel lightheaded you feel like passing out that may be a sign of dehydration so when you're taking faxiga of course unless you are on a, a sodium or water restriction by your doctor as much as possible try and make a conscious effort to keep hydrated uh, so you need to work with your doctor. Generally, as a rule of thumb, if you take medications like Faxiga, make sure you are well hydrated. And generally, certain people are at a relatively higher risk of becoming dehydrated. That is, for example, if you are taking other medications like uh, diuretics to manage your blood pressure, or if you're older, 65 and older people are more likely to develop dehydration, people who have kidney problems, or people who are on a low salt diet. 
these people are generally more prone to dehydration so if you fall into any of these categories it's definitely a good idea to be conscious of that and take the appropriate precautions number three side effect that you should not ignore you should be worried about is vaginal yeast infections yes faxiga has been known to cause vaginal yeast infections and it is definitely something that as a woman if you're taking faxiga you need to pay attention to and symptoms of vaginal yeast infection may include a vaginal odor, uh, a whitish or yellowish discharge, or in some cases, it may cause vaginal itching. So all these are signs that you need to look out for. Obviously, if it's persistent, if you take an over-the-counter, maybe preparation to kind of handle that and it keeps reoccurring, definitely may be a good idea to start talking to the doctor to see if Faxiga is even appropriate for you or if your doctor has any other ideas for you to manage such vaginal yeast infections. Another side effect that you should be worried about is yeast infections of the penis. Yes, the yeast infection is not only limited to women, it may also develop in men, especially men who are not circumcised and it results in a condition called balanitis. And such symptoms of yeast infection of the penis include redness, itching, swelling. Sometimes there may be a rash or a foul smelling discharge so all these are things that you need to be paying attention to if you take Faxiga as a man. If any of this will care, it will be a, definitely be a good idea to kind of discuss with the doctor to see the way forward. Chances are that they may have to decide whether Faxiga is the best for you or they may have to prescribe something else for you. The next potential side effect that you probably need to be paying attention to is urinary tract infections. Yes, Faxiga has been documented to cause urinary tract infections. And I must say here, in both men and women, you know, obviously women are more prone to that just because of the way their anatomy is, but men are not necessarily excluded. So you need to be paying attention if you're taking Faxiga. Some of the signs and symptoms of urinary tract infections that you should be looking out for is number one, they need to urinate very often or they need to urinate right away, the agency. You feel like peeing and it's like you have to do it right now. Sometimes there may be pain in the lower part of your stomach or what we call the pelvis or it may be manifested by blood in the urine. Some people may even manifest a fever, a, a back pain or even nausea and vomiting. So all those are key signs to look out for if you're taking Faxiga. Another potential side effect that you should be paying attention to is a condition called ketoacidosis. That is when there are ketones in your urine. Now, ketones are a byproduct of fat metabolism and is usually indica indicative of the fact that your blood sugar isn't being managed well. And that is something that you should be paying attention to because ketoacidosis can be serious and can be life-threatening in some circumstances if it is not well managed. And ketoacidosis generally is, is characterized by nausea, tiredness, vomiting, trouble breathing, stomach area or abdominal pain. All these are things that you should be paying close attention to if you're taking Faxiga. And like I said, it can be serious. So if you notice anything like that, it would definitely be a good idea to, you know, let your doctor know. Or even better still, if you can discuss with your doctor and get some ketone test strips at home, you know. The ketone test strips test the amount of ketones in your urine and your doctor can give you the guidelines as to what is acceptable such that if you're going beyond what is acceptable, it may warrant a call to the doctor's office. Uh, ketone test strips are readily available in any pharmacy, CVS, Walgreens. Uh, I would also put a link in the description if you're like me who doesn't like really going out these days because of all the craziness going on around in the world. You can order some easily from Amazon. So I'll put links in the description if you want to do that. Another also very rare but very important side effect to pay attention to is a condition called Fournier's gangrene or nicotizing fasciitis. This is a rare but serious bacterial infection that causes damage to the tissue under the skin in the area around the, the, the anus and the genitals, the area we call the perineum. Nicotizing fasciitis is, can be very serious. The good thing is that it's very rare and it can happen in both men and women. If you develop any fever, if you're feeling weak, tired, uncomfortable, malaise, like general weakness, lethargy, and you, and you develop any kind of symptoms in the area between the, the, the anus and the, for men's, for the scrotum, or in that area generally, if there is tenderness, if there is swelling, if there is, you know, any kind of uncomfort in that area, definitely a good time to be calling your doctor. It's very rare, like in 2018, the FDA reported that over five years, 
they had only discovered about 12 cases of Fournier's gangrene in people who had been taking SLG2 inhibitors, not necessarily Faxiga, but all the medications in that class. They had only discovered about 12 cases. So that tells you that it is quite rare, but unfortunately, if it happens, it definitely requires some sometimes hospitalization where they may give you very strong antibiotics to counter that uh, condition. But don't get me wrong though, Fasiga is still a very good medication because number one, apart from it lowering your blood sugar levels, it's also been shown to have heart protective functions. It's been documented to reduce A1C significantly for a lot of people that take it. So if you're taking it, feel comfortable taking it, but if you notice any of these side effects, definitely a good idea to start having that conversation with a doctor just to make sure that you know everything is right and you are not treading on any dangerous grounds. Thank you so much for sitting through. I hope you found some value in this video. If you did, do well to share it, uh, subscribe if you have not done so, and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you on the next video.